Nowadays, most programming language offers object-oriented programming. Moreover, usually they have two properties. They were born with it, or a new version of the compiler introduced it. They are Java-like, in which I mean that there is a class that contains properties and methods and so on. Close, the common list object system, is the way of doing object-oriented programming in common Lisp. It is really general, and it is implemented in common Lisp itself. One doesn't have to change the compiler. It differs quite a lot from the standard approach to object-oriented programming. For example, methods are not inside classes, and there is not a magic object called this. A class defines the state, that is, define the structure of the things we want to represent. We can create one using that class. For example, we want to create a class that represents a coordinate on a 2D plane. It doesn't have superclasses, but by default all classes inherit from T, and all classes defined with the class inherit from standard object. There are a couple of classes that are built in and in general are not subclasses of standard object. For example, of the one that represent common Lisp types, like integer, real, complex, character, and so on. Then we have to list all the slots. The slots are basically the properties or the attributes in the standard object-oriented programming vocabulary. In our case, we have two properties, x and y. Then we can pass more metadata to the class. For example, we can pass a documentation string. One can create an instance of a class using the function makeInstance. Then we need a way to name the parameters in the makeInstance function. So we add an init arg. This way we will use the keyword x to set the value in the makeInstance. The same way we can call y with the keyword y. And for the origin we set both the value to zero. It created the object origin, and if I inspect it, I can see that the value is 0 and 0. Usually it's a good idea to provide some constructor for our objects, so we define a function, make to the coordinate, that takes x and y, and it simply calls the backinstance function, setting the value of x to the parameter x and the value of y to the parameter y. Then we want to be able to set and read the attributes. To this, we return to the def class definition, and over that init arg, we can also create an assessor using assessor. This will create a function that will allow us to both read and write. If we want to make a slot just read only, we can use reader instead. There is also a writer, but it is rarely used. In our case, we want to be able to both set and read, so we use the assessor. The name we provide is the name for a function, so it should be not too specific, for example, x, because we may want to use the same name elsewhere. The idea is to use a more generic name, for example, coordinate x. The same way we can create an assessor for y. Now we can read the x coordinate of origin using coordinate x of origin. The same way we can set the coordinate of origin to a different value, for example 1, and now if I read the value again, we can see that it has changed. CLOS also provides a low level slot value that allows the user to read and change the value of slots, even if they are read only using only the reader keyword. For example, we could say set f slot value of origin and we want to change the x and set its value to 0 again. Then we can read with slot value and we get zero. Nevertheless, this should only be used internally. One should respect the public interface provided by the class. So, for example, if for a slot we only have the reader property, we should not change it. All the internal names could change in a future version of the same library. And, if not used properly, changing some internal values may break the behavior. Another interesting keyword for the slots is the allocation. For example, in Java, we can have static properties. A static property in Java is at the class level. So all the objects share the same value. We can get the same behavior in common Lisp using the allocation class. 
For example, for a 2D coordinate, we can have the number of dimensions. In this case, it will be always two. We call num the number of dimensions. We provide a reader and we set the initial value to two. Before we used init arg, which allows us to use a specific keyword inside the make instance function. In this case, we use instead init form, which provides directly a value. And the most important keyword is a location and we set it to class. By default, it is instance. We can see that for origin, the coordinate num is two. Now let's create another object. I call it unit and there's a coordinate one zero. Then using slot value, I change the value of the dimension and I set it to three. Now I read the coordinate num from origin again. We can see that it has changed. Changing the value for an object of a class it will change the value for all the objects of that class. In this case, both unit and origin are 2D coordinates. A class inherits all the slot of its superclasses. We start by defining a class point that just contains a single coordinate. Again, it does not have superclasses, it means that it inherits from standard object. And we add a coordinate slot, which is of type to the coordinate, we provide an accessor and an initial argument coordinate. Then we define another class that represents something that can be moved on a plane and we call it to the movable. In other languages, we could call this a mixin. So this is not really a class that can be instantiated, but it can add some functionalities to other classes, for example, to the point we may be able to have a movable point. And for a movable object, we just need a speed, which is again a 2D coordinate. Then we have an object to read the speed for a movable object and an initial argument. Finally, we define a movable point, which inherits from both 2D movable and point. Moreover, it doesn't add any slots. Now let's try to create an object of movable point. We haven't defined any slots inside movable point, but when we expect, we can see that we can have both a coordinate and a speed. Those slots were inherited from the superclasses. In class, everything is an object. Also the classes. Usually we reference a class using a symbol. For example, as we do in the make instance, but we can always get the object back using find class. From an object of a class, we can get the name back using class name. With the star, I represent the last output from the REPL. In this case, it was the class of movable point. And we can see that the name is the simple movable point. Sly is strictly connected with the common Lisp object system. And so we can inspect everything. For example, I can inspect the class of the movable point. I can see its name, I can see its super classes, and then I can see all of its slots. For example, we can see that it keeps reference for all the direct subclasses and direct super classes. This is useful for performance reason when close has to do the dynamic dispatch. And this is true for all the objects. For example, we, from the movable point, we can move to its superclass to the movable, clicking on to the movable. To the movable as a superclass standard object. When we are in standard object, we can again inspect all its slot. And in particular, we can see all its subclasses. In this list, we can see 57 classes that are basically all the class that were defined using def class from when I started the common Lisp system. Then I can go back to the previous view using L and instead now I go and inspect the class T. Again, we can see all the direct subclasses clicking on the list. And in this list, we can see that there is slot object that will go to standard object. But more interestingly, there are a lot of built-in classes, for example, for array, for numbers, and so on. If I click on number, I can see that its subclasses are then complex and real, and so on. I can inspect all the objects inside the common Lisp. 
This user interface is really interesting because it's strictly connected with the actual common Lisp image. For today this is all, let me know in the comments if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe.